Okay, thanks to uh, all that have joined us here in council chambers this evening, as well as those that are, have joined us from home. Uh, this is a meeting of the Pocosin City Council for Monday, March 25th. I'll call this meeting to order, and I would like to lead you in uh, invocation, and then I would ask the girls, uh, Troop 1012, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance from the podium, if we could. All right, if we could all please rise. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for the many blessings we've received in our city. As we move forward on several issues this evening, uh, we ask for a portion of your wisdom, and that we be fair to all the citizens that depend on those decisions. It's, uh, we always ask for your, your wisdom, your strength, and your presence, that they be felt by those in our public safety department, in our uh, military, whether they be federal, state, or local and uh, especially those serving in foreign lands, those who protect us while we sleep safely here within our city. We ask for uh, that in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, girls. Okay, I have uh, two special presentations this evening. I'm going to read them from the other podium. And um, the first one is a proclamation recognizing Child Abuse Prevention Month. Is there somebody from the exchange club that would like to join me? Something that you come right on. You can all come up if you'd like. <laughs> it's good to see all of you, so come on up. I don't think it's right to wake us up. I hope, I hope that y'all brought counsel one of your, your shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it can be arranged. No. <laughs> All right, I'd like to read this proclamation. I know this is, uh, is something uh, uh, especially important to the Exchange Club, but this is a proclamation uh, for the city of Pocosin as we applaud the Exchange Club of Pocosin for its dedicated work in the prevention of child abuse in our community. And whereas the City of Pocosin commends the Exchange Club of Pocosin for its promotion of ongoing programs in our community, which are designed to help prevent child abuse. And whereas the City of Pocosin stands firmly on the side of prevention of any type of abuse and believes no child should endure verbal, emotional, or physical abuse for any reason. And whereas the National Exchange Club adopted the prevention of child abuse as its national project, in 1979 in response to a request by its national president who, as a physician, noticed an increase in child abuse cases in his medical practice. Since then, April has been designated as Child Abuse Prevention Month, and the city of Pocosin supports and encourages all of our residents and our community leaders to wear blue each Monday in April in observance of Child Abuse Prevention Month. Therefore, I, W. Eugene Hunt, Jr., Mayor of the City of Pocosin, do proclaim the month of April to be Child Abuse Prevention Month in the City of Pocosin in recognition of our commitment to healthy, happy children and to help eradicate child abuse in our community and to support the efforts of the Exchange Club of Pocosin and all others who observe this important cause in their mission to bring awareness of this problem to the forefront and to help make our community a stronger and more loving where city where children will be able to grow and thrive without fear. So thank you all for bringing this. Thank you for wearing your blue. I wish I had seen the memo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wore all gray this evening. But thank you for this, and, uh, and we appreciate everything that you do. Would you all like to speak at all? Yes, I'll say a few words. Go right ahead, sir. You want to pass it down? Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, uh, 
appreciate the time up here and appreciate the, uh, the proclamation. Uh, and as previously stated, April is uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month. And in conjunction with that, uh, we're joining with Pocosta Little League on April the 13th for a, a day to distribute literature of which you have in front of you. And we have some uh, uh, other posters and things we'll have on the, uh, the backboards there. And Pelican Snowballs will be there. And I think last year we gave out over 200 free Pelican Snowballs to uh, the youth and their parents. And they received similar uh, literature as we gave you tonight. So thank you for the recognition. Thank you. And on behalf of all the members, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyway. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Gene. All right. Take care. Thanks. And Buddy should have told you about the shirt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Shirts anymore. <laughs>
no trash talkers, and always be respectful. All dogs must have their rabies shot. No children allowed without parental supervision. And make sure to clean up after your dog. No smoking or vaping, and, no, and most importantly, no alcohol. Must be, and your dog must be spayed or neutered, and there must be no littering. Follow all the rules and have fun. Um, and next is Ashlyn with the uh, park names. Hello, my name is Ashlyn Jones, and I would like to present the ideas that we came up with for our dog park. The Dogs of Pocosin, Bull Island Dogs, Big Woods Dog Park, 1012 Dog Park, The Dogs of the Sea, and the Sea Biscuits Park of Pocosin. Very good. So far, I think y'all have got it covered. Uh, I really do. Uh, very good suggestions. These are our designs. Okay. So you've got designs? Yeah, show them to the back. Now let me, uh, is there anything else, ladies? Yes. Go ahead. Other scouts, both boys and Girl Scouts, can help build benches, tables, and exercise equipment for the dogs. We have five girls in our troop. Two were unable to come, but they have contributed to this project. Charlie came up with the idea, and Grayson helped with, with the design. Thank you for your support and consideration to, for our dog park proposal. Okay, thank y'all very much. But let me uh, let me ask you to do one thing. Unless y'all are particularly fond of those posters, I would like you to give them to either Gretchen or Dave back there, who are the leaders of our Parks and Rec department. I will tell you, young ladies, that uh, is there anybody still here from uh, Parks and Rec advisory board? There's our vice chair. So the vice chair is here, and he's heard what you had to say because, believe it or not, we were just talking about dog parks right, right before this meeting. So please give your suggestions, your rules, and all that stuff to city staff so that we can say, okay, thank you very much. Would anybody like to follow that up and tell us something that's uh, I didn't think so. All right, I'll close the audience for visitors and ask council for consideration of the minutes. May I move that we approve our minutes of the regular session of March the 11th, 2019? Second. Okay, motion made in saying we approve the minutes of the regular session of March 11th. Questions or comments of council? Seeing none, Evie, please. Certainly. Councilman Huggs? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Uh -huh. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Andrews? Aye. Councilman Canella? Aye. And Mayor Hunt? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7 0. Okay, very well. Uh, we do have three public hearings this evening. The first is a uh, hearing on the proposed constrained capital improvements plan for fiscal year 2020 and beyond fiscal year 2024. Uh, Randy will be there short presentation before, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Members of council, Mr. Mayor, thank you for the opportunity to present this item. As you know, each year we prepare a capital improvements plan in partnership with the Planning Commission. In the past year, our planning efforts evolved to a constrained capital improvements plan and uh, this year is the second installment of that plan in many ways. It is uh, just the next year of the plan that you implemented and approved last year. Um, so rather than go through it uh, item by item, if I could, I'll just hit some things that are different. That would be and great. Some maybe things worth of special attention. Uh, one, I just would like to uh, point out to you that we've we continue to make changes to this document to provide clear linkages to the comprehensive plan, to make it uh, a, a more uh, readable document. We've included additional information about ongoing projects, projects previously approved that are still in some part of construction, uh, so that we don't um, have things to sort of fall off the end of the planning 
document. We don't have an implementation document to go backwards with. So we've included both of those things. Um, additionally, uh, as a reminder, not so much to you, but to the to the public that uh, that may be watching at home or part of this process, as council is well aware, in the last 12 months, uh, the council uh, authorized and we and we borrowed approximately 18 million dollars for a number of important projects that are in the capital improvements plan. The most significant in terms of dollars was the middle school project. That project, uh, as you know, the design process is underway, and I would expect um, plus or minus second quarter of calendar year 2020 to actually um, have a, uh, through the school board, a uh, construction contract approved and the in initial startup of that project um, essentially five quarters from now. Um, the superintendent is here. I would note if you have questions for her, I would also note to you that the uh, the bus associated with that initial borrowing has been acquired, and the um, and the various city projects, with the exception of TMDL, that were also included in that borrowing, have either been completed or um, are in process to be completed. You'll see that summary in the memo. Uh, additionally, as council will recall, um, as part of last year's CI CCIP process. You established uh, basically a, a debt division from what was available within the debt capacity of the city of tw about $23 million. You allocated about 20 of that to schools, or 20 of that to schools, um, with again the middle school being the largest part. Um, this budget continues to honor that in terms of sort of the next phases of school projects, but I believe that school division would like to get a little further down the middle school before they decide. Uh, what's next in terms of, of uh, the available remaining resources. They have a prioritization, as you're aware. They just want to make sure they can do one fully and correctly before they move on to the next one, uh, which, I, which I commend them for. Um, we have a residual amount um, on the city side of available debt capacity, some of which um, was contained in that original $23 million total number. And, one of part of which is the updated version of the five-year number, but uh, it is, is, is outlined in the second par first paragraph of second page. Um, the non-school debt capacity number uh, is about $5.6 million. Um, that is $5.6 million that is allocated in the plan, at least for now, as a TMDL down payment. Uh, we hope that uh, when the final approvals for the SWIFT uh, trade-offs and other things uh, are finally approved by the federal government, state government, that we won't need to hold on to that money. But until we do, we have a, an unfunded mandate coming our way that's significant. We hope to, to have already cleared that uh, process of approval already by now, but uh, it's not coming as quickly as we'd hoped. So the, the underlying recommendation is for the city uh, debt capacity to hold it until one we know what that's what it's going to be two to allow us time to complete the feasibility study for the public safety building which uh, you all uh, authorized the money for recently so you'll have that piece of information and then of course we'll have the benefit of your uh, updated CIP there are many projects um, reference it's already and, and not referenced but contained that all compete for a relatively small amount of capital bundle. Um, I would also uh, note and, and thank you once again for your recent uh, moves to help us uh, in terms of um, the public works equipment that you approved at your last meeting that or two meetings ago, uh, as we reserve our debt capacity, we still have needs, and they're not, they're not glamorous needs, but they're very important. When the solid waste trucks aren't working, we've got big problems real fast, and the same with, with some of the other things. So we, we continue to find ways and work with you to, to do the things we must um, while pre preserving your decision in the future on some of these larger things. And that's really the, the overall framework for the, the CIP. For those um, watching at home, it's about $14 million from various funding sources across a five-year period, not counting the uh, state appropriation 
and the almost 100 percent of the state appropriation is a little less than $20 million for the With Creek Widening Project, and that's the Pocosin side of the project. Um, the summary of recommended projects is on pages four and five of the document. Um, the departmental requests, uh, we present them all, even though we can't fit them all in the constraint plan, are in pages seven through nine, and I would draw special attention to page 10, which is a brief summarization of one place of all the new projects that came in, and these are typically year five projects, but as new things come in, draw special attention to them. The single largest which of the new projects is the um, re replacement of the turf field at the middle school. Um, okay. To answer any questions you may have, and following the public hearing, um, the council has certainly the option to approve or amend and approve the CIP, or if the council would prefer, to table that decision so that we could schedule a follow-up work session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions, Randy? Okay. If not, then I'd like to open the public hearing if there's any comments from somebody in the uh, audience on the uh, constrained CIP. Now is that time. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and uh, ask for consideration by council. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution approving the constrained capital improvements plan for fiscal year 2020 and beyond fiscal year 2024. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded that we adopt the plan as is. Uh, I would commend uh, staff, you make us look good. Uh, it's, it's nice of you to, to thank council for all of our decisions, but most of those you've set up for us very well. And again, it's the reason that we are uh, succeeding in a lot of these things is because uh, of our staff here within the city and our cooperation between the boards, including the school board and the schools in general. So I commend all of those uh, players as we move forward with this. So, uh, Evie, please. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilwoman Andrews. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman <clears throat> Canella. Aye. Councilman Hux. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7-0. Okay, the next public hearing is a proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance section 1 TAC 8 to clarify the requirements for applications for uses not specifically permitted. Mr. Horton's going to present for staff, sir. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Mayor, well, members of the council. Uh, this is, you know, text-wise, it's, it's fairly simple. It's uh, just kind of making something clearer that uh, was not as clear as it could be. Um, so with that, I'll get started. Um, advertisement date for public hearings. This is true, not just for this hearing, but the next one too. Uh, planning Commission was, uh, we did run ads for the Planning Commission uh, hearing back in February the 21st on the 1st and the 8th of the month. Uh, City Council uh, ads ran on March 8th, 2019th and March 15th, 2019th, also in the Daily Press. So, uh, as I said in my ever so brief uh, introduction, uh, it's been subject to conflicting interpretations due to the vague and ambiguous language uh, of the requirement. Here's the current wording. Section 1-8, application for use not specifically permitted. If in any district established under this ordinance, a use is not specifically permitted and an application is made by a property owner to the zoning administrator for such use, the zoning administrator shall refer the application to the planning commission, which shall make its recommendation to the city council within 60 days. Uh, I supplied the memo for the planning commission meeting where we were basically looking at two choices. One that would sort of follow, I guess it's fair to say, our interpretation of the ordinance up until maybe in the past year when we've looked at the language and we've said, well, you know, really what is this saying? Is this saying that you know, you could only allow it in a, if it's not allowed anywhere in the city, or can you allow it, you know, if it's just that district. So the Planning Commission, um, well, this is just a rather than argue over what it means. We're going to make it clearer. Uh, the Planning Commission did choose to recommend by a 5-1 to one vote the following language at February, uh, at its February 21st, 2019 public hearing. Um, and I've underlined the changes, and I will read it, though, for the benefit of those at home and, and, and in the audience. 
uh, if within a particular zoning district established under this ordinance, particular zoning district, a use is not specifically permitted and an application is made by the property owner to the zoning administrator for such use, the zoning administrator shall refer the application to the Planning Commission, which will make its recommendations to the City Council within 60 days. So it's, a, it's only a few words of change, but it does make it a lot clearer. Uh, and we added this part just to be clear. I think it's understood, but such an application shall not be made if the use is explicitly forbidden in the district for which the use is proposed. You remember a few months ago, the city council looked at tattoo parlors, which were explicitly forbidden in village commercials. So obviously we wouldn't consider a conditional use permit in that section. But what this really means is that, let's, let's say a use is allowed in, in the B2 district. Somebody wants to go into any district, could be residential, uh, could be you know GC or, or village community, a village commercial, rather, uh, they would be able to apply for a conditional use permit. Uh, the best example I can give you from something that we're tussling with right now at the staff level would be a storage yard. We have a storage yard in uh, a residential zone, which we're dealing with. Uh, this language would allow a person to apply for a conditional use permit for that use. Whereas if we took another route and we said, you know, it can't be allowed anywhere and, and it's allowed in B2, so you have to move to B2, that, that's, that's the difference. This is a more, the more liberal of the two, if I can use the word liberal. Uh, the, more per, the more permissive of the two uh, interpretations. Um, and that's essentially it. I mean, our ultimate goal here is to make the ordinance clearer. And I believe that um, strategy 21 under the comprehensive plan talks about reviewing and updating city zoning, subdivision, site plan, and sign ordinances, which we're going to get around to, to ensure coherence, clarity, and compliance with current law and development practices. So we're just trying to make it clear. Um, Staff feels that by adopting this option, we're, we're accomplishing the goals of the comprehensive plan. Uh, we're providing clarity. And uh, with that, um, you know, any future applicant, we can be clear with them, which ultimately you really want to be. I mean, we need to be able to give the applicant answers. Uh, so that's where we are. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Any questions, Council? So basically, uh, what I hear is more of a housekeeping item. Uh, to make it clear, and this is the practice that we have historically been doing, but now the language supports that. Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. Right. Okay. And that's that was my understanding. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Well. Thank you. All right. I'll open the public here. If there's uh, if there's anybody that would like to speak on this item. Okay. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for consideration by council. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance by revising Appendix A, Article 1, Section 1-8, application for use not specifically permitted. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded that we approve this. Any final comments of council? Being none, Evie, please. Certainly. Councilwoman Andrews? Aye. Councilman Canella? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Mayor Hunt? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by vote of 7-0. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the final public hearing this evening is a proposed amendment to the zoning and site plan ordinances to accommodate brew pubs and craft and microbreweries. So, uh, I think That's I know what me this again. might be about, but go ahead. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. The city has been asked uh, about the allowance of brew pubs and craft microbreweries, uh, about their use in the B2 zoning district. Currently, we don't allow it at all. Uh, based on the last decision, anybody wanting to do such a use would have to apply for a conditional use permit. So this is a way of just sort of streamlining it and allowing this use by right in B2 without having to go through a conditional use permit. Um, even though this 
this uh, request or this inquiry, uh, I'll put it like that, uh, came from one particular establishment, of course we have to look at any particular establishment that may come in. We're not changing the ordinance for one person. We're changing it to, um, to bring in a use that uh, could be beneficial to the city. Uh, to that, uh, it's important to keep in mind that craft breweries have become integral parts of economic development uh, and they do uh, have been shown to benefit economies, uh, which obviously is a focus of the city. Uh, nearby localities have recognized the value of this type of business as the use is allowance allowed in a lot of counties <laughs> and citizens in Virginia. Uh, zoning districts where the use is allowed by right include business equivalent and industrial zoned areas, and, and that's certainly true. Um, uh, as you look around uh, to our neighbors. Uh, I provided, and I don't really think I need to go into detail on this tonight, but I did provide, uh, provide a few uh, websites and report which uh, certainly um, elaborate on the value of uh, craft microbreweries and, and brew pubs, which is the restaurant aspect, essentially, of a microbrewery. Um, just to get our term straight, a brew pub has a microbrewery on the premise. So it's, you know, you're selling 25% or so of what you manufacture through the brew pub, at least. Um, and I, of course, you can have a crowd microbrewery without a brew pub. You know, you can just be in the business of making beer up to 35,000 barrels uh, per year, which is a lot of gallons. Um, but uh, each barrel is about 31 gallons. Um, Plenty of guidance under the comprehensive plan. Um, you know, generally under land use, uh, we're trying to enforce a pattern of land use and development that reinforces and improves the quality of life of citizens and assists in achieving the goals of the comprehensive plan in economics, environment, housing, utilities, transportation, and uh, recreation. Um, several objectives. Uh, objectives, sorry, uh, is to concentrate uh, commercial development in a unified, accessible commercial district, which is why we're advocating B2. Uh, promote the use of land in a manner that is harmonious with other uses and does not negatively impact the natural environment. Well, most of our B2 is off of With Creek Road. It's got the accessibility in terms of roads and, and development patterns, so it fits there, basically. Uh, promote the use of land consistent with the capacity of existing and planned public facilities and services. I think I just touched on that with the last comment. And the city's ability to provide such facilities and services. Obviously, B2 is one of those areas. Uh, strategies, this kind of breaks it down into to, to the, smaller, uh, the smaller elements. Uh, encourage all future commercial development to be located in the vicinity of Big Woods and along with Creek Road uh, with close proximity to Victory Boulevard. B2 would do that. Encourage a variety of commercial uses that will expand and stabilize the city's tax base. Obviously, economic development potential is there. Uh, review and, and, you know, this number 21 is going to be familiar as, as we go forward, but uh, review and update city zoning subdivision site plan and sign ordinances to ensure coherence, clarity, and compliance with current law and development practices, and that's certainly what this would do. Um, Definitions, uh, again, we've got a definition of brew pub uh, added in uh, section 1-3. Uh, it's a craft microbrewery that operates in conjunction with a retail tavern or pub, restaurant on the premises. And in the craft microbrewery, which I think I uh, explained, uh, I said 35,000, I stand corrected. It's 15,000 barrels of beer per year, uh, and the uh, barrel is uh, 31 gallons. Uh, you might have accessory uses such as tasting rooms, uh, even uh, for beverages produced on site, restaurants, reception halls, and, uh, and you know, in those reception halls, you may have live entertainment as well. Uh, Uh-oh, that's my fault. I hit the wrong button. Uh, Article 10, Section 10 to A, this is in the B2 district, is going to say that uh, craft microbrewery and brew pub is allowed by right. And we go to the site plan ordinance, which is where our parking requirements are. So we're in Appendix C, Article 1, Section 1-08, under minimum off-street parking requirements, and it talks about commercial uses. And 
the thing about these commercial uses is that they're laid out as having specific parking regulations for each use. There's a number of them under there, but this would add uh, a brew pub under, uh, under B <laughs> and uh, would add a craft microbrewery under W, which I'll get to on the other. I think what's really of note here is that we are trying to differentiate between the non-public area and the public area. Certainly the public area is going to be your larger generator of traffic. Uh, and we've tried to make that consistent with our shopping center requirements, uh, one per 200 square feet in public areas. Non-public, when you have a brewery or a kitchen, it's, it's, it's really sort of an industrial use. We're, we're doing a one, uh, one parking space per every two employees uh, that's used on the largest shift, essentially. That's true of brew pubs, and that is also true of craft microbreweries. Um, uh, we're still staying in the public areas for one per 200 square feet and the uh, one space per teach two employees on the maximum working shift for the non-public areas. Uh, Off-street loading space, it's currently section 1-08D of the site plan ordinance, but I would suggest that maybe there, and, and it's in the, it's in the, um, the, uh, the ordinance, too, that is, refers to Section 108D, but because the site plan ordinance may get changed over time, it might be good just to say be provided in accord with the site plan ordinance, not, not, uh, not refer to that particular section. And I think I had that section up there. I had that section up there for brew pub as well. So that, that, comment, that comment is the same for both of those, um, both of those uses. Uh, again, staff does have a recommendation. You know the Planning Commission's recommendation. They did uh, vote 6-0 to uh, pass this along uh, for the B-2 uh, district. Uh, by adopting the proposed amendments, the goals, objectives, and strategies of the 2018-2038 comprehensive plan will be adhered to. Therefore, staff is supportive of the amendment. Uh, and, of course, the regulations will be coherent for any future applicants. Um, with that said, I'll be quiet and take any questions you might have. Questions of council? I had one. Okay. Uh, do we think there's going to be like a giant influx of brew pubs that re require us to amend the ordinance as opposed to just doing it the way we have been with a conditional use permit? Because it could still come with a conditional use permit, right? Mm -hmm. You that can is still true. do it that way. I'm that just wondering, true. like, do we think we're going to... I guess I'm asking I, why I can't, we would want to add it as opposed to just doing a conditional use permit. What are the what are the I think we have one that's definitely gonna take advantage of it, but forecasting out into the future that's you know, I, I can't tell you that there's gonna be more than that one. Uh it would stand to reason that uh you know if if the one does well there there might be another one that wants to locate here, but I I can't I, guess I can't tell was, you what is there'll the be a lot of adding that to the ordinance as opposed to just having them apply for a conditional use permit. Well, time is one element that uh, that is that is a saving thing. And then, of course, when you go through a conditional use permit, you have less assurance that it's going to be approved. I mean, even though I mean, I'm sure the city council generally looks favorably on that. But to an applicant looking at it, they see more process. They see more uncertainty. And uncertainty is, is something that people who want to do a particular use, uh, they, don't really, they don't really like it that much. So. Can, I, can I add one point? Yeah, um, and it's, it's uh, just to add one point, and it's not specific to brew pubs, but to the extent that something is by right and it's something that is desirable in the city, mm -hmm. by making it by right, it helps focus that desirable use, assuming it is one, in the area that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. If you make it so that every place is accessible equally through a conditional use permit process, they may not choose the location that might be best from in terms of a That's comp true. plan. We've seen that in the past where people sought conditional use permits for things that weren't available or in that zoning district but were available in others mm -hmm. that at times they even had vacant spaces but it was cheaper to go outside the district. So to, prov to, provide the pl pr to provide the place where you think it is most appropriate mm -hmm. actually provides a time and small monetary incentive for it actually to locate in the place you think is most appropriate. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Yeah. Any other questions? Makes it easier for businesses to come into the city and uh, and open up. I, th I think that's probably a good thing. Okay. Yeah, I would think that a business owner that would want to do a business like this, looking at two bodies he's got to go before, and you can put all kinds of conditions on him, is going to be reluctant to come here when he can go somewhere else and do it by right. I think it makes much more sense to, to have it by right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So any questions of Wally? Any other questions? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing at this point and ask uh, if there's anybody that would like to speak uh, on this issue. Okay. Seeing none, I'll close the audience for visitors and ask uh, for consideration by council. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance by revising Appendix A, Section 1-3, pertaining to definitions and Article 10, Section 10-2A, pertaining to permitted uses, and Section 1-08C1 for the site plan ordinance pertaining to parking requirements. Second. Okay, motion made and second that we uh, approve this change in the zoning and site plan ordinances. Uh, questions or final comments? Yes. Get a motion that we modify that? Uh, I'm in my motion to reflect that. Okay, and the second? Second. Okay. All right, so uh, as modified there, uh, we're going to uh, modify the zoning and site plan ordinance. Uh, final comments, Council? Okay, seeing none. Evie, please. <clears throat> Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Canella? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Councilwoman Andrews? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. And Mayor Hunt? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7 0. Okay. Under new business this evening, we have uh, like five items. First is an ordinance making additional appropriations for fiscal year 2019. This would deal with With Creek Road milling and repaving, uh, With Creek Road signal upgrade, and Coast and Avenue sidewalks. Absolutely. As you mentioned earlier, this is kind of like housekeeping items for us. You have an ordinance in front of you tonight for three projects. You have already previously approved the projects with the engineering department. Again, this is just allowing us to encumber money as we go through these projects. The, of course, the milling has already been done, so we're now in the process of getting the reimbursement back. In the future, as the engineer department and the finance department, we're going to work to make sure the resolutions and the ordinance come all together at once so we don't have to bring these housekeeping items back. So tonight, I'm asking for an appropriation for the milling and repaving of about 148 the signal upgrade of 278, and then the sidewalk of 314. Okay. Questions? Is there a motion on this? Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance making additional appropriations for fiscal year 2019 for the milling and repaving of Wood Creek Road, signal upgrade, and the Coast Avenue sidewalk. Sorry. Motion made saying that we uh, approve this ordinance. Uh, questions or comments? It is. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the one that ties in the existing sidewalk infrastructure to the two campus. To municipal park. Correct. Correct. It will, at its core, it ties in the middle school complex, which takes in the middle school and the elementary school, with the high school and the primary school through a connection to municipal. But further into that, it will actually create a, a, a connection all the way down to to South Austin South Park. Austin. 
Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Evie, please. Certainly. <clears throat> Councilman Canella. Aye. Councilwoman Andrews. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman Hux. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by vote of 7 0. Okay. The next is a resolution to authorize the city manager to enter into contracts with the Virginia Public Works Equipment and Houston Freightliner for the purchase of a dump truck and a debris truck. Okay, and Council, tonight um, in, in representing Public Works, our fleet, I have John Ellis with us for any questions, but um, this is kind of standard. We are using a rider clause on two companies or two industries, uh, National Joint Alliance and the Houston Galveston, which happens to be the same company that are the same alliance that we use for the mini pumper that you saw out earlier today. Um, but both of these um, are within their right to do so. However, I'm asking for um, the resolution approval for the city manager to enter into contract to purchase these two vehicles or two trucks. One of them is a 2020 Freightliner debris truck of 156K. And then the other one is a 2020 Freightliner of a dump truck of 146. The good thing about this, for John's purposes, both of these are Freightliners, so he'll be able to work on both of the vehicles versus having a Freightliner and some other type of one. Okay. Questions? I would note to okay. the council that you approved the funding for this two meetings ago, yes. but because the contracts are each separately or together in excess of $100,000, it has to come back to you for award. Okay. Very good. Uh, will you let Buddy drive the truck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to proceed? Mr. Mayor, move that we adopt a resolution to authorize the city manager to enter into contracts with Virginia Public Works Equipment and Houston Freightliner. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, motion made and seconded. We uh, approve this resolution and authorize uh, our city manager to enter, enter, enter into that contract. Uh, Evie, please. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Hux. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Canella. Aye. Councilwoman Andrews. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7 0. Very good. Uh, next is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with TJ Crooks Incorporated uh, for the breakwater at Messick Point. Mr. Mayor, Garrett Figgins from our engineering department will present this item. Yes, yeah, so as you know, the city was awarded a uh, Virginia Port Authority grant uh, to construct a third breakwater at Messick Point. Uh, the city issued um, invitation for bids for construction on February 3rd, 2019, and the bids were open on February 27th. Uh, four companies submitted bids, and uh, after we reviewed the bids and checked the references, staff has recommended that, uh, that the city contract with uh, TJ Crooks, Inc., um, who's a low bidder. Um, this resolution authorizes the city manager to um, enter into an agreement with uh, TJ Crooks for construction services, and it authorizes... Uh, the city manager to modify the scope of services as necessary during the project. Questions? I, I, don't, I have one, and maybe this is just me losing track. And the repair of the existing breakwater from damage, is that now done? Okay, mm -hmm. I just missed that one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sort of a follow-up. Do we have some kind of a warranty agreement in case it does like the last one and just destroys itself? There is a one-year agreement as it relates to this with the current um, bidder with T.J. Crocs, so yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, very well. All right, uh, is there a motion to proceed with us? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with T.J. Crooks Incorporated for construction of a breakwater at Messick Point. And I hope his name doesn't refer to the yeah, conduct Second. of that company. <laughs> Second. Okay. Uh, motion made and second. We proceed with this uh, uh, extension of the breakwater at Messick Point uh, using grant money. So appreciate staff's uh, diligence on both the bid process, getting it under contract, but not only that, but the application for the grant that enabled it. 
So thank you very much to all those that uh, participated in this. So with that said, Evie, please. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilwoman Andrews. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman Canella. Aye. Councilman Hux. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7-0. Okay, the uh, next item is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for professional auditing services with Cherry Becker. LLP. Okay. Um, the city issued an RFP, which is a little different than the one we just discussed, which is an IFB with an RFP. Um, we did not know the price. Um, we had four firms very qualified to provide us quotes or pro proposals, I should say. We interviewed three of those firms, but it was the committee's recommendation to continue with Cherry Beckard. So presented in front of to you is a contract. Now, this is a little different because Randy mentioned, the city manager mentioned earlier that he has the authority under 100000 Since this is a three-year contract that we're entering into, it exceeds that threshold, so we're bringing it in front of to you. So I'm asking for um, the resolution to authorize the city manager for the audit for FY19-2021 20, with a two one-year extension after that. Okay. Questions? Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to proceed with this item? Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for professional auditing services with Cherry Beckert, LLP. Sir. Okay, motion made and second that we uh, continue our uh, auditing relationship with Cherry Beckert and uh, appreciate their services and appreciate their future services. So, uh, Evie, please. Certainly. Councilwoman Andrews. Aye. Councilman Canella. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Hux. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the vote carried by mo the motion carried by a vote of 7-0. Okay. And the last item on their new business is a resolution making appointments to the Economic Development Authority and to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Somebody prepared with a, a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution making appointments to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board and the Economic Development Authority with the following names inserted. Charles W. Gatz, Jr. from the Central Precinct, Eden Harris from the Western, Judith Massé at large, Keith Fay at large, and all of their terms will expire March 31st, 2022. And for the Economic Development Authority, Thomas J. Bain, Jr., whose term will expire March 31st, 2023. Second. Okay. Motion made and second. We uh, approve the resolution appointing new members to Economic Development Authority and Parks and Rec Advisory Board with all those names inserted. So uh, any comments? Evie, please. Councilman Hux. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Green. Councilwoman Andrews. Aye. Councilman Canella. Aye. Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7 0. Okay. Uh, that's it for business. So, comments of the city manager? Nothing this evening, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, council directives. Councilman Hux. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have no comment tonight. Councilman Green. Just one, Mr. Mayor, to remind everybody tomorrow is the mobile food pantry at the old city hall from 10 to 1. Our host this time are the Pocosian Yacht Club and the Pocosian Exchange Club. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, Councilman Canella. Nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilman Southall. Yeah, I'd like to uh, congratulate the Exchange Club and uh, thank them for their fine work relative to uh, ch child abuse prevention and congratulate Walter Appelt for uh, his award and his services for the, working with the city and the EDA. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Nance. <coughs> Mr. Vice Mayor. Only one thing. I just wanted to comment that I thought the that was just great participation by the Girl Scout troop to bring in a solution and make a presentation. And we don't have that too often, but I thought that was just super. Yeah, I wish we'd get better at that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, no, it was very well done. Uh, thank you to, to them. Also, thank you to the fire department. I guess uh, most people will see a new engine in town, uh, which council got a chance to review this evening. Uh, looking forward to placing something uh, new in service, especially something different, uh, and, and looking forward to the outcome of that. So appreciate, again, uh, staff's uh, leaning in to find cost-effective solutions to run the city uh, through grants and through um, applications, which uh, has been a big turnaround. So appreciate that. Appreciate everything everybody does, and I will take a motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Mayor. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. We adjourn. Evie, please. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Hux. Aye. Councilman Canella. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilwoman Andrews. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7-0. Okay, and we are adjourned.